Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brewcraft, a sudsy delve into D&D 5th Edition home brewing. I'm your host, Thomas Fleming, and tonight we're talking Half-Lives. Uh, so this, uh, this topic was suggested by uh, our fan of the show, Bob Robin. Thank you, Bob Robin. We're going to be creating some sub-races. Music is down again. Okay. Let's turn that music down then. Better? Did everybody hear me? Did you at least hear the opening? Do I, should I do it again? You know how we love to redo the openings of the show here on Roll Call. All the time. At least my microphone was turned on this time. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we'll be, we'll be making some sub races for the, uh, the half work race, uh, inspired by, good, 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 uh, inspired by the, uh, the variant orc options that are provided in the, uh, Volo's Guide to Monsters. So, let me just pop open my PDF for that. See. While I do that, as always, I have a delicious beverage here with me. Tonight, I am drinking So Fresh and So Green Green, which is a reference to the green skin of orcs, and also the beer is a reference to an outcast song, uh, which I will not perform here on stream because that is not royalty free. Uh, but let's get a shot of the uh, can here. So fresh and so green, green from Terrapin Brewing Company. So let's crack that baby open. Give it a taste. It is a fresh hopped IPA, so I'm imagining some intense hoppy flavor. It's actually very smooth. I, I was expecting it to be overtly bitter, as hops tend to be. This is actually very smooth. Um, yeah, this is good. Tasty. All right. Let's get into it. Let me, uh, let me grab my PDF of Volo's Guide to Monsters, and we'll open up to the orc section. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, welcome, Generic Nerd. How you doing? Oh, you know what? Before we get into our brew, I almost forgot. Uh, there is going to be a new interactive option for the folks in chat here. Uh, if you are paying attention to your screen, which I hope you are, with the little... Uh, little uh, slideshow that's going by you can see the reference to fan art Fridays if you follow us on Twitter and tweet at us with your fan art uh, ha with the hashtag uh, FAFRP RC something like that I, I don't know professional streamer here um, uh, with your fan art you might uh, you might get us uh, you might get us to show your fan art on the stream. Uh, there's also a little blurb there. Uh, there's also a little blurb there about uh, about an interactive option for this show. Now uh, we'll be polling live for our next homebrew. So tonight we are pitting the spellless paladin, as suggested by Bob Raman, versus a class that I've been working on, and it's personally near and dear to my heart. The Culinarian, a chef-inspired class. So, if you so choose, you may cheer five bits per boat. And, uh, yeah. Whichever, whichever uh, option has the most votes at the end of the stream tonight will be our next homebrew. Anyway. Let's dive into some half work, shall we? Uh, so, for 
for starters, let's take a look and see at Volo's Guide to Monsters. Find the half orcs. Or sorry, the orcs. Not half orcs. There we go, orcs. Excuse me. All right, so we've got uh, we've got many different flavors of orc here. We've got the orc blade of Ilnivar. Uh, so as we as many of us know, orcs are either depending on the lore, either descended from Grumsh or are at least at the very least devoted followers of Grumsh, the one-eyed god. Uh, so Ilnival is Grumsh's battle captain, a devious strategist who directs Grumsh's soldiers with boldness. Among orcs, warriors that venerate Ilnival emulate their deity. Such orcs learn to command their fellows in ways that are unpredictable but help to ensure victory. So, from the, from the get-go, the fact that these, that these these, this flavor of orc is uh, a commander of sorts. Screams for me, f screams to me that they should have a charisma bonus option instead of instead of uh, your your typical strength constitution. Maybe strength charisma. So let's let's jump in here. Let's say, yeah, very warlord. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let's do here, let's do, or con charisma. Yeah, we could do, we could do either or. Um, let's do chosen of Ilneval. Actually, before I do anything, let me save this. There we go. Now it will auto-save everything, so that way we don't have the problem that we had with the Blood Rager, which is almost... I've almost finished retyping everything from that episode. Whoo! That was a doozy. Uh, Alright, so Chosen of Ilnival. Uh, let's... Uh, Let's take a look here, open up another thing in the PDFs, and then we can copy-paste so we don't have to type everything. That was a little song for you guys. I hope you appreciated it and enjoyed it as much as I did. Alright. Releases, there we go. This way we can just... Actually, I don't really need to copy paste stuff because this is a sub race. It's not. I don't need all that. All that jazz. Uh, so they're gonna be getting all that main stuff from a regular half orc. I mean, we can. We can maybe. We can maybe do what they did with the tiefling and just say this option replaces this option uh, when you choose this type of half orc. So uh, ability score. Alright. Do we have your So do we want to do strength and con or strength and charisma or con and charisma? Con and charisma I feel like sets sets them up like I mean not that it's a terrible thing, but it sets them up to be potential sorcerers as well. Which could be interesting. Uh, 
course, we're half orc. I'm kind of partial to the strength. Your strength score. Music is being extra distracting. Here, let's turn it. Let's turn it back down. Let's turn it down more. Is that better? Charisma score. So we've got our ability score, and then uh, we'll say this option replaces the ability score increase feature. That way, people don't get confused and think, uh, and think they get plus four to strength, because that I could definitely see that happening. Let's, let's give this an extra thing. That way, we've got a little bit of extra space there. And we'll give this an extra thing. All right. So let's pop open the PDF again. Uh, oh, okay. So the so the voting for the next uh, the next topic that we'll do next next week uh, is going. It's five bits per vote, and the choice at the end of the show that has the most votes wins. Uh, we're doing the spellless paladin, which you suggested, Bob Ramen, versus a class that is near and dear to my heart that I've sort of started working on. Uh, called the Culinarian, a chef-inspired class. So, yeah. Uh, you guys are welcome to vote on that. Let's see. So looking at the stat block for this, uh, for this feller here, they have a trait here that's called Faux Smiter of Ilnaval. The orc deals an extra die of damage when it hits with a longsword attack included in the attack. Sorry, my uh, my mother is texting me and does not understand when I tell her that I'm streaming. <laughs> Let's be honest, you just wanted to be in first. <laughs> but I appreciate it. So yeah, we've got uh, we've got an option that gives you an extra die of damage when it, when you hit it with an attack. Uh, but half orcs already have a brutal critical. A little column A, a little column B, yeah. Uh, uh, half orcs already have some something like brutal brutal critical or something, right? They they get they deal an extra die of damage when they are savage attacks. When you score a critical hit, 
Yeah, with a melee attack, you can roll one one of the weapons die one additional time. So I don't I don't know if we want to stack more of that more more dice on top of that. That might be a little bit of overkill. But we've also got uh, here Ilnaval's command. Uh, up to three allied orcs within 120 feet. So we, we would obviously adjust that to uh, up to three allies, period. Uh, of this orc that can hear it can use their reaction to each make one weapon attack. That's pretty cool. That's something that, that, uh, that we could definitely use as part of our... Uh, part of one of our half-orc sub-races, or part of this particular half-orc sub-race, I should say. So let's... Let's grab... Let's scoop that up. Ilnaval's Command. Ilnaval's Command. Gotta remember my formatting here. Alright. So it is an action, so it has to, so as an action, as an action, you can war cry for the buff, just to change the name. Yeah. War cry. As an action, you can choose up to three allied creatures. They can then use their react. Who can hear you, I should say. Who can hear you. They can then make a single I think one more one more little one more little flavor thing is always nice with the with the sub race. So let's say oops, the wrong thing. Let's say they're like warlords. Let's say What if we gave it? What if we just gave them the chop menacing for something? Maybe. Uh, maybe switch out the intimidation for persuasion. There's another paragraph, uh, another paragraph about these guys. So we, there, we might get some inspiration here. The wisest among these leaders gain Ilnaval's favor and rise to become known as Blades, tactical experts who advise their chief in matters of war. Blades lead from the front, wading into combat fearlessly while barking orders at lesser soldiers. A blade knows how to use orcish ferocity to best advent to his best advantage and helps the ordinary warriors to work together against their adversaries. Performance for giving oration? Maybe. Although it does it does specifically say that they bark orders, so they're not they're not particular it doesn't seem like they're being they're being particularly persuasive. Uh, perform maybe. Uh, we could also, we could also just, we could also give them like special weapons training or something, like something to that effect. 
Yeah, I think that I think that uh, I think that works. Let's uh, let's go. Let's give them something like. In the inspiring. Dead of medicine. Yeah, that works. You gain proficiency in the performance skill. This feature replaces the menacing feature from the half orc race. All right. Two, two, two. That's going to bring us to our next option, which is the Claw of Luthic. Luthic is Grumsh's wife, and the paragon of maternity to all orcs. She is the cave mother, a fierce dweller in the darkness, who raises new broods of orcs to be vicious and strong. Her symbol is the cave bear, and orc females raise such bears alongside the orc whelps. Females particularly attracted to Luthic grow long nails and lacquer them, learning to use these claws as weapons much as Luthic uses her own. Orc females devoted to Luthic are in charge of fortifying and maintaining an orc stronghold. They help to guarantee the survival of the tribe, and most are skilled in the healing arts. The most powerful among Luthic's disciples are the Claws of Luthic, which can use the Cave Mother's magic to heal, protect, and curse. So this, uh, this screams cleric to me. Uh, so obviously wisdom would probably be is probably a good choice uh, especially based on the monster stat block they have they have a 15 wisdom yeah they have a 15 wisdom uh, so I'm going to say and I think they're I think this particular half orc sub race is going to get uh, is gonna get some innate spell casting because of their because of their ties to uh, to uh, Luthic, so let's uh, let's say chosen of Luthic, and then we'll go here. Do this ability score increase. Wisdom score increases by two, and your constitution score increases by one. And then we'll go. So copy the this option of places blah blah blah. And again, we want to make sure cure wounds or healing word once per long rest. Spare the dying. Uh, I was thinking spare the dying cantrip. I was thinking I wasn't. I, I, I we could do cure wounds or he, uh, I think cure wounds make more sense makes more sense than healing word. Uh, or we could do bless as a once per long rest. 
uh, that's another option. Because looking at the spell casting for the Claw of Luthig. Uh, okay, they don't have Bless. They have Bane and Cure Wounds. So maybe Cure Wounds, yeah. Cure Wounds and Warding Bond. Once per long rest. And Spare the Dying as a cantrip. Oh, they don't even have Spare the Dying. They have Resistance. Gui guidance, Resistance. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, at third level they get, oh, you know what, don't they, they don't, they don't get a second level spell, they get a first level spell, cast as a second level spell. Um, yeah, for the non-cantrips, yeah. Uh, let's see. The mothers. Let's, let's say Luthix. Blessing. Let's just bear the dying, why not? It's such an underrated cantrip and almost nobody picks it, so maybe this would give this would cause someone specifically to have it. Uh you learn to spare the dying cantrip. At third level. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the formatting. Italicize Spare the Dying. You learn the Spare the Dying Cantrip. At third level, you learn the. We'll say Cure Wounds. Learn Cure Wounds. The spell Cure Wounds. You learn Cure Wounds. I need to look at how I need to look at how they word uh, the main spell casting. Wording is important. Two flames. Uh, oh, once you were okay. You can cast Hellish Rebuke spell the Hellish Rebuke. I can't talk. Once per day is a second level spell. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. You can, you can cast the Cure Wound spell. Once per day. Once per day? Does it say per day or per long rest? Once per day. Okay. Once per day. Second 
one level spell. All right. And then... Eh, we don't need to, we don't need to give him a second, uh, a second level spell, I don't think. I think that's good enough. So let's, uh, let's see. What else do we want to give them? What else do we want to give the Chosen of Luther? Maybe we give maybe we give them claws like natural weapons That could be that could be something Let's let's take a look at the tabaxi and then we can just kind of copy paste from there I think Cat's claw yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. Uh, because of your claws, you have a climbing speed. Uh, skip that. Get off, uh, your claws are natural weapons. There we go. Copy all that. Replace the savage attacks. Yeah. Luthic. Your claws are natural weapons which you can use to make unarmed strikes. If you hit with them, you deal slashing damage equal to 1d4 plus your strength modifier. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. This feature replaces the savage attacks feature from the half orc race. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I like this. This is moving quick. Quick and easy. All right. Let's check out our next option for orcs. The Hand of Yorturus. Oh, there's actually two. There's a hand of Yurtris and the nurtured one of Yurtris. So we'll kind of we'll kind of read through this stuff. Hey Val, glad you could join us. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking. A mashup of the hand and the nurtured one. So uh, so let's read let's read this. Yurtris is the orc god of death and disease. He is a horrifying abomination covered in rot and infection, except for his perfect smooth white hands. Orc priests that oversee the line between life and death are known by the others in the tribe as Hands of Yurtris. They dwell on the fringes of, orc of an orc lair, usually communing with other orcs through the auspices of those who follow U Luthic. The hands of Yurtris wear pale gloves made of bleached skin of other humanoids, preferably elves. 
symbolizing their connection with Yurtris, and are sometimes called White Hands as a result. Every orc knows the hands of Yurtris are the tribe's gateway to the ancestors. Orcs who die having served the tribe will go on to rituals meant to send them to Grumsh's realm. As, as befits followers of the god who doesn't speak, hands of Yurtris remove their tongues to emulate their deity. For a reason similar to why an eye of Grumsh puts out one of its own eyes. Then we have the nurtured ones of Yurtris. When plague strikes a tribe, the hands of Yurtris isolate the sick. The priests then minister to those who can be saved but not healed. The hands cultivate the sickness of these nurtured ones, turning them into instruments of defense and weapons of war. When orcs go to battle, a band of nurtured ones might charge in first to give themselves up while softening up the enemy by spreading Yurtris's vile blessing in its ranks. Terrifying. <laughs> so let's say let's let, let's take a look here. What do we got here? Touch of the white hand as necrotic damage. We've got. Okay, so so the hand the hands are also sort of clericky. Um. got the nurtured ones that are just tanks that run in and spread disease. Okay. Con and wisdom. Yeah. Alright. So let's, uh... So let's flip. Let's flip flop the con and wisdom from the uh, from the chosen of Luthic. Let's do. Let's do. Uh, chosen of. Chosen of Yurtris. Then we'll do keep our formatting the same, ability score increase. Your wisdom score. Wait, wait, did I okay, so let's do con first. Let's do con con two wisdom one. Your constitution score increases. Two. And your wisdom score increases by one. And then we'll include our little disclaimer. This option replaces the ability score increase feature from the half or grace. Let's do so a stench aura, huh? Yeah, that makes that that probably makes sense. Um, but you wouldn't want it to affect your allies, so we'd have to figure out a we'd have to figure out a way that you could that you could turn it on and off or something, or give them another really good feature to counterbalance the fact that you're going to be making all of your party members sick. Uh, otherwise, nobody will ever play a Chosen of Yurtris unless they're trying to be an edgelord. Um, yeah. Or be active all the time. Too powerful. Yeah, um... Maybe instead of, maybe instead of a, like, a stench aura, what if we did... Let's do another close look here.
What if we gave what if we gave them What if we gave them something like a like a hunter's mark almost or like a like a way to like a way to poison their weapons with their with their with their you know disease that they carry. What if what if we said as a bonus action give them the nurtured ones advantage against poison Yeah, yeah, that that works. Um, advantage and saving throws against uh, poison and disease. Yeah. So we can say, blessing of Yurtris. Let's say bless. Uh, Let's do, let's do our, our poison damage thing first. So let's say... Uh, diseased one's gift. As a bonus action, poison spray cantrip. We could do that too. Let's just that's that's easier than doing I mean it's easier than than trying to figure out a way to balance of potentially applying you know applying poison to your weapons and stuff uh, yeah uh, you learn the poison spray cantrip Blessing of Yurtris. You have advantage on saving throws. This feature proficiency with poisoners kit. Yeah, we could we could add we could add that too. Wisdom is your spellcasting ability. All right. What time is it? Is it 44? Then after the blessing, this feature places the, uh, let's let's go with relentless endurance from the pack orc race okay, let's scroll down so everybody can see nicey nice Nice. All right. Wow. 
we might actually we might actually finish early tonight with this stuff. We've only got one more one more uh, flavor of orc, and that is the red fang of Shargas. Shargas is the the orc deity of deep darkness and sneakiness, a murderous god who hates anything that lives that isn't an orc. Orcs consider Shargas to be a divinity suited for suited to pariahs and weaklings, all of them unfit for true roles in tribal life. These outsiders live in the most remote, deepest parts of the tribe's domain. The elite among Shargas's followers are the assassins and thieves that follow the cult of the Red Fang. They perform assassinations, stealthy raids, and other covert operations on the tribe's behalf. They rely on a mix of intense training, yeah, dex and intelligence. Uh, they uh, they rely on a mix of intense training and magic and magic granted to them by Shargas. Uh, most Red Fang enclaves keep the nurture keep and nurture giant bats, creatures that are sacred. In uh, that are sacred to Shargas. Red Fangs ride these bats into battle or on secret raids and assassination missions into enemy territory. Uh, so yeah, for sure, uh, for sure we're going uh, we're going with uh, we're going with Dex and Int, which will be interesting for an orc. Uh, so let's let's do it to it, shall we? Chosen of Shargas. Ability score increase. Your dexterity score increases by two. And your intelligence score My one. Okay. Let's switch things here. Choice of thumb should have one that gets a aggressive trait. Yeah, we could do chosen of grumps too. Alright, uh so one obvious choice is going to be giving them the ability to cast the darkness spell uh, once once per day. give them int. Maybe we give them con. Stealth proficiency. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's say sneaky. Unseen. Let's go with unseen. You gain proficiency Pass without a trace w could be a good option. I'm I'm kind of try I'm mostly trying to pull from the from the information that they give uh for the Oof. That's also very good. Uh, so, in Volo's guide, the stat block for a, for a Red Fang of Shargas, they have a, fee, a trait called Shargas' Sight, uh, where the magical darkness doesn't impede their dark vision. That is very good. It's also very powerful, and maybe not something we should give to give them the Shargas' Sight ability. Yeah. 
I mean, we could do that. Um, welcome back, generic nerd. Uh, we're, we've almost we've almost created sub races for all of the uh, deity influences in orc society. Um, we're just we're we're debating what to do with this uh, this chosen of Shargas. Uh, if we if we should give them the ability to see in magical darkness, uh, if we should give them the ability to cast the darkness spell. Maybe we maybe we just group maybe maybe we say that they have the ability to see in dark. Uh, yeah, that'll that'll be replaced. That'll probably replace relentless endurance, honestly. Uh, um, yeah, I think I think what we'll do is we'll combine the Shargas's sight and Veil of Shargas and say uh, that they have the ability to. You like seeing magical darkness? Me too. I, I do too, but I don't want I don't want it to be too them being weaklings, that makes sense. Yeah. Um I don't want it to be too crazy. I don't especially as a half orc, they're they're not quite full orcs. They're they might not necessarily be in so super in touch with it with Shargas. So I think what we're I think what I wanna do is do something similar to the uh the shadow sorcerer uh where we'll say at let's say at third level they get the ability to cast uh, cast this the darkness spell once per once per day and when they cast the spell using that feature they can see they can see in the magical darkness i think that's a good median where it's where it's still a powerful thing that they can do increase dark vision range instead uh, we could, we could, but I think that, I think this is a good marriage of those two abilities is to give them, to give them the ability to cast the darkness spell and be able to see when they cast that darkness spell. So it still gives them the ability to be that assassin -y, sneaky, uh, they, you know, they cast the darkness spell, they run into the darkness and then they can kill a thing in the darkness and the thing can't see them, but they can see it sort of deal. Um... I think that's a, I think that's a good a good happy marriage. Uh, so let's do uh, uh, unseen. You gain proficiency in the stealth skill, and then we say blessing of Sharga. third level you gain the ability to cast uh, you can you can cast the darkness spell once per day Intelligence is your spell casting ability. Uh, I probably just misspelled it. Yeah, it's double A. Ability using this feature, you can see through the magical darkness. And then um, that's it. I think this is a good place for me to grab a refill. And when I come back, we'll uh, we can do we can do a grumpsh option, a specifically grumpsh centric option, and then we can 
we'll probably have some extra time so we can sit around and shoot the shit or whatever. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab a refill and uh, I'll be right back. Thanks for hanging out, guys.
All right, and we're back. Well, uh, hopefully I fix that. I can turn the gain all the way up on my microphone. That might help. Have it, I had it sitting at about halfway, so that might help. Anyway, let's get back into it, shall we? Let's talk about let's talk about Grumsh. So let's uh, let's actually pull up. Ooh, that beer's making me gassy. Uh, all right. Let's pull up a thing on Grumsh, shall we? Just for our own edification. Or Groomsh, however you want to pronounce it. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Okay. Grumsh was an orc god and a greater deity. He was envisioned with one eye by all who named him a god and was a deity mainly worshipped by orcs and orogs. Volume is much better? Okay. Yeah, I don't... I mean, I'm... Now I'm showing when I speak, I'm in, I'm in mostly uh, the yellow range. Again, highly technical audio terms, but... Uh, Hopefully, the, hopefully that's better for everybody. Um, switch out Poisoner's Kit for Ray of Sickness spell at third level. Sure, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Uh, at third level. You can cast. Does Ray of Sickness upcast? The Ray of Sickness spell. I don't think it upcasts. Kind of like Poisoner's Kit because it's pretty rare. It does. Okay. Um. Sickness spell as a second level spell once per day. Wisdom is your spell casting ability. Okay. So let's go back to Groomch. Darkness is a se it is. Why did I did I put as a second level spell? No, no, I didn't. Yeah, no. At third level, you can cast the darkness spell once per day. Good options. Uh, what for Grim uh, generic nerd? Speak with animals, bats only. I mean, we can we can we can fully deck out these uh, we can fully deck out these sub races if we want. I was just I was just dropping some t in general for half orcs. Cool. 
Uh, yeah, I could, uh, I, I mean, we can say Bat Speaker or Bat Whisperer. Let's say Bat Whisperer. Let's say... You can cast... Not to mention we can take this and tailor for our own games. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can cast the... Speak with Animals spell. At will. When you cast it in this way, it only works for bats. It only allows you to speak to bats. And then we could say, we could add uh, we could add to the uterus to the uterus uh, one. We could we could add poisoner's kit back in there as a as a separate option. Uh, I don't have a clever I don't have a clever name for this. We could just call this poisoner. Medieval half orc Batman, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'd love to see fan art of that. You gain proficiency. With a poisoner's kit. Um, I mean, we could call it, we could call this disease vector if we really wanted to. Disease vector, that would be that's that's pretty cool. Uh, all right. We could, I mean, you can you can always tailor uh, the chosen of Ilnaval or chosen of Luthic, uh, however you like. But let's let's do some Groomsh centric stuff. So let's do chosen of grooms. Scroll up so that we can see. Actually, I'm going to put I'm going to put a page break right here so that we yeah grooms chosen of grooms column break right there. That way we can see stuff. Yeah, we can just fit everything in the same page. Sort of. Eh, maybe not. Just barely. Okay. Alright. So, Chosen of Groomsh. This is going to, I think we're going to stick, we're probably stick with the baseline ability score increase of uh, plus two strength, plus one con for this, uh, as a regular half work would get. And then we can take a look here. Uh, back at our Volo's Guide stuff. Because we've got many of the... Many of the orc options get aggressive, uh, which is as a bon uh, yeah, more in line with a base half orc, yeah. Um, so many of the orc options get aggressive as a bonus action. The orc can move up to its speed toward a hostile creature uh, that it can see. I think that's an important thing for for Groomsh as a 
uh, a sort of war bringing destruction guy. He wants to instead of savage attacks or menacing. Um, that's a good question. Do we want to? Do we? I mean, menacing is menacing. It's inti intimidation proficiency, which is it's it's. Uh, fun to say that you're that you can r really intimidate people, but uh, often uh, intimidation doesn't really play out too well for low charisma characters, as many half orc characters ha tend to be. So I mean, I pers I personally do. Also should have unseen trait from Shargas replace menacing. Yeah. Uh, copy paste from here. Yeah, and Tim menacing is is more of a utility uh, utility thing than than combat. And this, uh, yeah, savage attacks also leans toward uh, toward Grumsh. Relentless endurance or savage attacks. Yeah, I think. They, uh, they, oof, that's a tough one. That's a really tough one. Um, I would say probably relentless endurance over savage attacks. Like, savage attacks, you definitely want to, you want to have that additional damage option for sure. Um, Let's just get started here. Um, ability score increase. Your strength score feeds more into fueled by undying rage. Yeah. Your strength score increases by two, and your constitution score increases by one. No changes there. All right. Then we have aggressive. That's not how you spell aggressive. B. Aggressive. B. E. Aggressive. That is how you spell aggressive, huh? Didn't look right. Alright. Aggressive. And then we can just copy paste from here. I'll copy paste and edit slightly because uh, as a bonus action... You can move up to your speed toward a hostile creature that you can see. This feature replaces the Relentless Endurance feature. That's not how you spell Relentless. Relentless endurance feature from the half for grace. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's definitely it, things. Things look weird when you don't when you don't type them off them. All right. Replaces relentless endurance feature from the half orc race. Okay. So we've got that. Now. What other particularly Groomshi options do we want to give our chosen of Groomsh half orc? Let's see. Groomsh, Groomsh told his worshippers to do the following Gather and breed, and your numbers shall flourish. Rise up in hordes. I should probably read this in an orky voice, right? Gather and breed, and your numbers shall flourish. Rise up in hordes and seize that which is rightfully yours. Ride, kill, and conquer. Uh, yeah. Blessing of Grumsh. Is that a thing from the Eye of Grumsh? In the monster manual? It probably is. I'm just gonna grab... I'm just gonna grab my... Physical copy of the monster manual. Surprisingly poetic, yeah, for orcs. Yeah. Surprisingly poetic. <laughs> Pardon me. I mean, we basic we basically have. Um, so what the what the eye of Grumsh gets is the is Grumsh's fury, which basically uh, adds an additional damage die to weapon attacks, or an additional D eight. It's not even an additional weapon die. So I mean, we have we have uh, we have the. Uh, Savage attack that adds that adds to crits. Do we want to do we want to just blow this half orc sub race up with with damage die? They would be the ultimate barbarian with with brutal critical and savage attack and uh, extra damage die on hits. Yeah, that's a bit much for a sub race. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Um. Uh, let's, let's read on. Let's see. Uh... Okay, so here's something that's interesting. Uh, some of, some of Grimsh's titles. He who never sleeps. He who watches. Once a day for a minute or such. Yeah, we could, or we, or we could do, uh, we could do something like a, like a limb, like something like a channel divinity almost sort of where, uh, um, so you know how the storm sorcerer does, uh, has the channel divinity that allows them to, uh, deal max damage with a lightning or thunder spell. Uh, what if we what if we gave them the option to once once per day, uh, they choose to roll they they instead of rolling dice for an for an for the damage for a melee weapon attack they take maximum damage, they do max damage. What if we what if we did that instead? I mean, it would still it would still be subject to farming for crits and stuff because then as soon as they crit, they they'd probably be like, "All right, to, this is the time that I choose to do that." But it's a makes sense for a once per day ability. Yeah, I think so too. So let's say. Blessing. 
and related to perception. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that. I'm thinking that too. I'm thinking. I'm thinking we give them perce some perception thing. Uh, blessing of Grumpsh. Once per day, when you hit with a melee weapon attack, you can I keep going back to slicing out your own out your eye as well. It's too flavorful to ignore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a melee weapon attack, you can choose to take max maximum damage instead of rolling for damage. Or instead of rolling for damage, you can choose to take maximum. So much damage potential. This thing could blow up most low-level creatures pretty well. <sighs> Yeah, but it's a, it's a matter of of finding the right moments to to use it. And once they once they use this particular feature, then they can't use it again until the next day. So instead of rolling for damage, you can choose to take maximum to deal maximum damage instead. Choose to deal maximum damage instead. Once per day, when you hit with a melee weapon attack, instead of rolling for damage, you can choose to deal maximum damage instead. Cool. Sounds good. And... What we could what we could do is we could replace the uh, we could replace the savage attack option with this and that would and that would make it less damage spammy that's an option Let's pop the perception option in there too. Watcher, we'll call that watcher. You gain proficiency. Did for my rogue half orc who followed Groomsh. He lost an eye and eventually gained the ability to give off light from the socket once per long rest. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, proficiency in perception in the perception skill. This feature replaces the menacing feature from the half orc race. All right. I think we're I think we're uh, I think we're sitting pretty here. I think we're I think we've done. I think we did. I think we did a good, guys. I think we did real good. And we've still got half an hour left of the show, so, um, I mean, I can, uh, we can hang out and I can take some questions from you guys. If you guys have questions or more suggestions for half work things, we can sit and discuss. Uh, I can, we can do whatever you guys like, because I don't have anything particular that I need to do.
Um, but yeah, I think that I think that uh, what we've got here is are some solid options for half orcs. And for people who don't necessarily want to play the typical half orc, we've got a charisma option. We've got an intelligence. We've got some intelligence and wisdom in here. Um, dexterity, even. Feral half orc to represent an abandoned one. Uh, give me, give me some suggestions, Bop. I mean, what, what, uh, what did you have in mind? Talk about your craft brew for the week. What, uh, what do you, what do you mean, generic nerd? Are you talking about the beer that I'm drinking, or are you talking about the, uh, talk about plans for next week. The game provision the beer. <laughs> um yeah, it's uh it's it's definitely a I'm not an IPA person. Uh but this is an IPA that I can that I can drink. I think that I think that it's definitely flavorful, bite attack, maybe a few other things like that. For a feral half work. Uh sure. Let's do it. Uh but yeah, the the beer itself is very is very good. Uh I'm a fan of Terrapin. They're uh they're based out of uh out of Georgia. I think they're in Atlanta actually. Um probably tell me here somewhere on the Athens they're from they're from Athens Georgia uh, but yeah I'm a, I'm a fan of Terrapin they have some they have some good beers uh, but I had never had this one before it's uh, it's definitely an IPA that I would consider drinking again which is not something I can say about too many IPAs I'm not a huge fan of IPAs but this is one I would I would drink again uh, all right, so let's so let's call this let's call this or this half work the unclaimed. How about that? They're not they're not chosen by any of the any of the gods, and are cast out from half from orc from orc society, whatever you know what what have you. Um, So let's say I want to give this I want to give this uh, lose the orc language so so they oh so they don't so they don't speak orc at all or they don't speak at all So are we? So are we going uh, like a like a? F f are we going feral or are we going for someone who is for for a half orc who is not associate or who is choosing not to be associated with orcs? Or are we doing both? Am I being talked into doing both? Because I can be talked into doing both, raised by someone else. I've got a, I've got enough beer in me. I could be talked into doing both. Maybe, yeah. The powers of suggestion. All right, cool. So we'll. Uh, so let's do the feral one first. Let's do let's do a wild a wild half orc, who is not who is not associated with any sort of civilized uh, society. So, let's do both. You know you want to. And the power of alcohol. Yeah, of course. Of course, of course. 
Ah, uh, okay. So so let's do it. Let's do our feral one first. Let's call this one the unclaimed. And let's start with ability scores. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we go we go buck wild with this one, and we give them uh, plus two to strength, plus one to dex, and plus and plus one to con. Cause why not? <clears throat> Alcohol plus peer pressure. Two more orcs. Yep. <laughs> Uh, ability score increase. Excuse me, by the way. I didn't excuse myself for my belch. Increase. Ability score increase. Alright. So let's say your strength score increases by 2. Your dexterity score Increases by one. Or actually, say, let's go, let's say, and by two, and. Uh, wisdom from being in the wild? Yeah, we could do wisdom. Do we want to do, we want to do strength, dex, and wisdom? Or strength, con, and wisdom? Or strength, strength, yeah, strength, dex, and wisdom. Strength, uh, bleh, strength, con, and wisdom. What is the logic for the dex mod? Uh, I was thinking maneuvering through through the wilds, but yeah, we could we could do strength, con, and wisdom, and your strength, wisdom, just strength, wisdom. Okay, yeah. Uh, strength and wisdom, uh, and your wisdom. Score increases by one. Valis sounds like a D and D parties encounter. Uh, Val is a very good friend. She and I have been playing uh, D and D together for a few years now. Replace menacing with survival. Yeah, definitely. Um. Uh, uh, let's call this Hiss Hiss. Yes, Hiss Hiss. Uh, she, she played a, uh, a tabaxi bard to my, uh, lizard folk druid. We were, we were good lizard cat and cat friends. It was a good time. Uh, ability score increase. Uh, what do we want to call the survival proficiency? Uh, we can say, let's call it resourceful. Resourceful sounds good. You gain proficiency. And the survival skill. Subtext. This feature replaces a menacing feature from the half orc race. Okay. Then we had then we had a suggestion for a bite. A bite attack or the ability to bite. So let's let's just copy paste from another thing that can bite. Bite bites a good idea. Yeah. So let's copy paste from another thing that can bite, which is lizard folk. Ironically, after I was just talking about them. Oh, Turk. He was a good, good lizard boy. Yes, lizard folk can bite. Thank God so many monsters can bite. I know, right? Uh... Alright, 
copy and a paste. Byte. Your tusked face is a natural weapon which you can use to make unarmed strikes. If you hit with it, you can't beat him, join him, right? Your tusked jaw is a natural weapon which you can use. Blah, blah, blah. If you hit with it, you deal piercing damage equal to 1d6 plus your strength modifier. I think I'm going to drop it to 1d4 because half orcs have a smaller mouth than a than a lizard folk. Uh, plus your strength modifier instead of bludgeoning damage normal for an unarmed strike. Okay. So we got survival and we got a bite. What else do we want to give this guy? Gore. Gore. Maybe we want to give him... Replace the savage attacks like the Luthic one. Yeah. else do we want to give him? Man, we got so many sub-race options for half-orcs now. Everybody should love these. Um. Hmm. Savage, wildness. Oh, I had dropped frames two minutes ago? Man, 56%? Why didn't y'all tell me I was dropping frames? Replacing common with speak with animals, but that's a little tough. Uh, I lose the orc language, give them something else, maybe something like the Outlander ribbon. Hmm. Didn't notice? Okay. Hmm. I guess it. I guess it's probably less noticeable when it's just one person, and you're mostly paying attention to the text that I'm typing and just listening to my voice. Uh, man, we were dropping frames on Sunday night, though. Like I kept getting notifications. I don't know what was going on. It was crazy. We were having a hard time. Um. I actually really, I really like the idea of the speak with animals instead of common. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It is, it is hard to, it is hard to do. Uh, it's hard to, to convince someone to play a character that can't actually communicate with their party. Um... Maybe we, maybe we give them... Maybe we give them something similar to the totem barbarian, where they get where they get uh, they get the ability to speak. Uh, what is it? Speak with animals as a ritual, and it could also make it really hard to RP. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what does the totem barbarian get? It's been a while since I've looked at it. Me. Be sense and speak with animals as rituals. We could allow them to cast be cast be sense 
or animal messenger or some something these this would obviously be more flavorful than uh than useful so to speak but i mean who knows um let's uh let's call this honestly the gore idea i might steal for regular half orcs in my games yeah, yeah, I mean, if they have tusks, why not let them gore things? Um, I think Tarzan, yeah. Uh, let's call this Wild One. And let's say... You can cast... The speak with animals spell. Speak with animals and beast sense spells once per day. Wisdom is your spellcasting ability. All right. So I think that's the unclaimed one. That's our that's our wilds, our wild half work. Not tied to any society. So now we have a half-orc that is raised outside of orc society. What do we want to call a half-orc raised outside of half-orc or out of orc society? Adopted. Adopted. Okay. So let's say just for the sake of this, I'm going to get rid of this page break so that we can fit everything in. So we should be able to fit everything in on that last little section. All right. Ability score increase. I was going I was going to I was going to give them the It would probably be more like half L's with the skill versatility and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I almost kind of imagined them like the Pathfinder half work where it's where it's very similar like Pathfinder half works are similar to human to Pathfinder humans and Pathfinder half elves um, so yeah let's say strength or con plus your choice uh, Yeah, I could see that. I could see that working. Ability score increase. Your strength or constitution. Actually, let's say increase. You gain plus two to either your 
strength or constitution. I was thinking pick strength or con. Yeah. Yeah. Strength plus two to either your strength or constitution score. And uh, I don't like the wording of that. Either your strength or constitution score increased by one. By two. Sorry. Increased by two and an ability score of your choice increases by one. Cool, cool. We'll add our little our little disclaimer. Oh, I've got, I forgot to add the disclaimer for the other one, too. Uh, man, I forgot to add the disclaimer for most of them. Copy. Skill versatility for the replacement of menacing. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And there we go. All right. So then we have skill, oh. skill versatility. And instead of yeah, because we're not gonna we're not gonna give them savage savage attacks. Replace orc with a language of your choice. Yeah. Skill versatility. <coughs> Excuse me. You are a half orc who was taken by someone who encouraged you to be more than your orc heritage. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, skill versatility. You gain proficiency in two skills of your choice. And then we would have something after that. And then we would have... I'm just going to map this out while we figure things out. We would have languages. Oh, forgot to add my little disclaimer for not using menacing. Uh... Places menacing. Okay. Languages. You learn. You can s speak read and write common and one language of your choice this feature replaces the languages feature
from the half orc race. And then we have one one more feature thing that we should that we could give we should give them at least one more. Oh, we ran out of space. I guess I'll have to bump this one to a new page. All right, all right, all right. New page. Here we go. Man, we sure filled up that half hour, huh? All right. Uh, skill versatility we got. <laughs> Replace savage attacks with something more civilized sounding. Hmm. Well, let's see. We could do... We could give them a tool proficiency. Some kind of... We could do something like... Higher education. And say, you gain proficiency... in one set of artisan tools or skill versatility is pretty weighty. We might need a, to go lighter on other features. one set of artisan tools or one musical instrument of your choice you just call that educated say that this one replaces savage attacks uh, copy paste That sound good? Giving proficiency with artisan tools or a musical instrument? I think that makes sense for a half orc that's raised outside of uh, half raised outside of orc society. They'd probably be given opportunities to learn, uh, you know, something like that. Cool. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six new sub races for half orcs. We put in some work tonight, guys. Uh, y'all, y'all deserve a a uh, round of applause. That was good. That was real good. Uh, I had fun making them. I hope you guys had fun helping out. 
Um, yeah. So, almost as many as the elves have now. <laughs> uh, now comes the end of the episode spiel. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for joining us, Val. Uh, I hope to see you around more often. Um, thank you for joining me for Brewcraft uh, and helping me make uh, make all these half work sub races. It was super cool and fun. I. Uh, if you like what we do on the channel and you're so inclined, uh, you should give us a follow. Or, uh... What, what, Val? What's your normal schedule? Uh, uh what's... Well, what's my normal schedule, I should say? Uh, normally I stream... Normally I stream this show... Hey! Hey, you... Uh, so, uh, yeah, Val, you should join our Discord, uh, the, uh, I'll get, I'll get to the, I'll get to all that information, uh, 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 so, yeah, uh, our normal streaming schedule for this show is, uh, every Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So for those of you on the West Coast, that would be 3 to 5 p.m. And uh, yeah, if you guys are so inclined, you like the you like what we do here on the channel. We do uh, we stream D and D stuff on on the weekends typically. Uh, we've got a new show coming up that's going to take place on our off weeks from our normal campaign. We're going to be doing a crazy beefed up uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, some of our friends from the chat will be joining me as players in that. Um, but yeah, if you're so inclined, give us a follow uh, here on Twitch. Uh, or if you like us that much, you could subscribe to our channel. Uh, we've currently got our subscriber emotes in the works. We've got subscriber loyalty badges in the works. Um... We've got all kinds of fun stuff that's that's that we're working on currently. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at Roll Call RP. That's at R O L E C A L L R P. Uh, don't don't search uh, with two L's instead of the L E. It's some person who has an account that ha they haven't used for, like, two years. Um, you can also follow us uh, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got links for all that stuff down below. Uh, join our Discord community. There's uh, lots of fun folks in the chat tonight who uh, are part of our Discord community. You'll get all kinds of updates early. Uh, before they're released to the general public, uh, yeah, Generic Nerd is working on our on our uh, subscriber loyalty badges. Uh, much many many big props to Generic Nerd. Uh, you are a blessing. Um, yeah, join our join our Discord channel. You'll get all kinds of information before the general public. Uh, there's a cool community that's getting built there. Uh, you can find other cool streamers in that community as well. Uh, I think that's all of my announcements. Um, I'll continue, I'll continue the, the polling process for, uh, what, uh, what subject we'd like to cover on the next, uh, the next episode, since we didn't really get too much, too much, uh, action on that tonight. Uh, I'll probably have to find a better way to... It is December, the season of giving. That's right. Uh, and we want to give more stuff back to you guys as well. So uh, and it, if you can spread the word about the channel, uh, that's that's all we really need. Um, it's just getting getting the word out about us so that we can get more, uh, more people uh, to watch us. Anyway, uh, I think that's everything. I don't have cue cards. Uh, I probably should, especially after having a couple of beers. Uh, but, uh, yeah. 
thank you again for joining me, and may all your brews be crafty. Nailed it. <laughs>